Imagine discovering a loophole. A loophole so powerful that it could make you a hundred million dollars. A loophole so exploitable that the government had to add new laws so that no one could abuse it ever again. A loophole that was entirely based around onions. I know that sounds crazy, but it's true. And in this video, we're gonna get to the bottom of why it's illegal to trade onions in the United States. I want you to imagine life as a farmer. It might seem like a stable job, but it's actually quite risky. The market for specific crops can change from year to year, and farmers don't wanna risk having a ton of crop that is useless when they need to sell it. So to mitigate these risks, farmers make arrangements with buyers called futures contracts. Simply put, both the seller, so the farmer in this case, and the buyer agree to exchange goods at a specified price, quantity, and future date. For example, a farmer might not have any harvestable onions yet, but he would enter a futures contract with a buyer who would agree to buy 1,000 pounds of onions from him for say, $1 per pound in exactly six months from today, once the onions have been harvested. The farmer benefits because he can lock in prices six months in advance to mitigate his risk. And the buyer usually benefits too, because the farmer gives discounted prices in order to have that security. Enter Vincent Kasuga, an onion farmer from upstate New York. He was a bright man and he had a smart idea. Kasuga wanted to create a monopoly. All he had to do was find a way to control almost the entire supply of onions, but of course, it's hard to buy an entire supply of a given commodity without raising any suspicions with the government. But this is where onion futures contracts come into play. Kasuga figured that if he bought onion futures, he could gather all these agreements, which on their own wouldn't raise any suspicion, but still be entitled to buy onions on a specified future date. By the time he actually got physical possession of these onions and the government found out, it would be too late. Kasuga's plan seemed infallible, so he decided to take a bet on himself. He partnered with futures trader Sam Siegel and in the early 1950s they headed to Chicago, the center of futures trading. At the Chicago Mercantile Exchange, they locked in their purchase on onions futures. On paper, they started capturing a huge percentage of the soon to be harvested onions. But since none of it was physical, no one really noticed. Their plan was working. Fast forward to the fall of 1955. Siegel and Kasuga bought so many onions and onions futures that they controlled 98% of all available onions in Chicago. His plan had worked and they had cornered the market. They had monopolized onions and now they could control the price. They had pulled off the impossible. But with time ticking before people would start to realize, they had to act quickly. With their 30 million pounds of onions stockpiled, they started to exercise their control over the price. Of course, they set the price very high. This made Kasuga a lot of money, but he didn't stop there. He knew that he could make the price go up, but he also knew that he could make the price go down. So what he did was he shorted the onion market. In other words, he made a bet that the price would go down. Normally this comes with risk, but remember, Kasuga has complete control over the market since he controls the supply. After taking out this huge short on the price of onions, he sprung his final trap. All those onions he'd been hoarding, he flooded the market with them. The price fell through the floor, literally. At one point, the price of onions was actually negative. An empty bag was 20 cents, but a bag filled with 50 pounds of onions was even cheaper at just 10 cents. Onions were so abundant, so many people had more than enough that the cost to store them was more than the cost that anyone was willing to pay for them. Traders who were stuck with onions literally couldn't give them away, no matter how hard they tried. They called orphanages, hospitals, and schools to try to get rid of as many onions as they could, and the rest of them, well, they dumped them in the Chicago River. And Kasuga, who had made a bet that the price would go down, got exactly what he wanted. After this scheme, society was devastated. Traders were wiped out. Farmers came home to their families bankrupt. The financial impacts rippled through the economy, impacting consumers and businesses alike. And Mr. Kasuga? Well, he walked away with $8.5 million. That's today's equivalent of over 100 million. People were fed up and they complained to Congress so much that by 1958, the Onions Futures Act was signed into law. This law made it illegal to trade futures on onions. The ban ensured that the onion market would never be cornered again. But this came at a cost. 
most people don't even realize the lasting negative impacts that this rule has. To this day, it's hard for onion farmers to plan their crops and accurately lock in prices, and it's all thanks to the Onion King himself, Vincent Kasuga. And now you know why it's illegal to trade onions. Thanks for watching. If you're interested in money, you can join my free newsletter, which will be the first link in the description below. And if you don't want to miss another one of my videos, subscribe, or you might never see me again.